So let's find the trigonometric values of um, the angles in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So let's let's start with a with a with a 30 degree angle. So I have to, first of all we have to remember Sokotoa. So Toa. <clears throat> that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So I'm looking at a ratio of sides of a triangle. Let's start with the sine of a 30 degree angle. So here's my 30 degree angle, and I like to look at angles as if they're, you know, to make this little um, curvy thing, I, I think they're like eyeballs. And they're eyeballs, and they're looking opposite something. So this is the side opposite the 30 degree angle. This is my hypotenuse. It's always opposite the 90 degree angle. And for purposes of this conversation, I'm going to say my hypotenuse has a length of 1. So I need to find the length of this side, the opposite side, so I can put it over the length of the hypotenuse, which is 1, and thereby get the value of sine 30 degrees. I wrote sine theta there. Well, how can I find the length of this side? All, all I know is that I have hypotenuse of 1, I know the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And, and I have c, which is, which is 1. And I know that if I square 1, I again get 1. But I still have two of these variables right here, a and b. And I only have one equation. So I don't really know exactly how I should try and solve this. Well, I'm going to move my equation, my, my, my Pythagorean theorem up there to get it out of the way. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take this 30, 60, 90 right triangle, and I'm going to duplicate it right below it. So now I have a 30 degree plus 30 degree. So this big angle right here for this larger triangle I just made this big triangle that I just made right here. This big angle is now a 60 degree angle. Well, this angle hasn't changed at 60 degrees. And this angle then re remaining is going to be 60 degrees. So what I have here now is an equilateral triangle. And so um, <clears throat> I know that this side is 1. That means that this side is 1. And it means that this entire side here is also one. Well, if this entire side right here, the one that I just drew the nice bracket on, if that is one, and I had just duplicated it, that means that this side right here, which is the one that is opposite my 30 degree angle, has a measure of one half. So let's go back to our original triangle, this one right here. And let's call this side A, this side B, and the hypotenuse side C. Well, now I know what A is. So I can go 1 half squared plus B squared is equal to 1. So that gives me 1 fourth plus B squared is equal to 1. I can subtract 1 fourth from both sides. And I wind up with b squared equals 3 fourths. And when I take the square root of that, I get b is equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 4, which is radical 3 over 2. So I now know that the three sides of a, well, that, 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 that if I have a hypotenuse of 1 and another side of 1 half, my third side of this 30, 60, 90 is going to be radical 3 over 2. 
So I've redrawn my 30, 60, 90 right triangle, and I've given the measures of the sides. And um, I would say that if this is a 30 degree angle, that my sign is the opposite, one half divided by the hypotenuse. So my sign of a 30 degree angle is equal to one half. And my cosine of a 30 degree angle would be equal to, would be adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that would be radical 3 over 2. And my tangent of 30 degrees, well, I like to look at tangent as being sine divided by cosine. But I don't want those to look like negative signs, so I will erase them. So I have 1 half divided by radical 3 over 2. So that is equal to 1 divided by radical 3. Perfectly fine to leave it in that form, but if I was to rationalize it, it would be radical 3 over 3. And the only reason I'm showing you the rationalization is because you will see that a lot more frequently than you will see that. But they are the same thing, and at least in my class, either one is considered correct. So again, I'm going to take my 30, 60, 90 right triangle, and I'm going to do something to it. We already know that, that sine 30, degree, 30 degrees is equal to 1 half, and cosine 30 degrees is equal to radical 3 over 2. Well, I'm going to take my triangle here, and I'm going to turn it like that. Has the sine and cosine changed? Of course not. The ratio of the side opposite to the hypotenuse is still 1 half over 1. It's still 1 half. If I decide to turn it completely upside down, it's still the same ratio. I can make it go any way, any direction I want. In fact, I can even go like this. I can even take it and I can flip it. Let's flip it left right. It's still going to be the same. Well, let's flip the numbers look kind of backwards, but it's still the same. I can take it and I can flip it up down, and the numbers are still the same. So no matter how I put this triangle, the sine of a 30 degree angle is always going to be one half because it is the ratio of the sides of a triangle. The cosine of a 30 degree angle is always going to be radical 3 over 2. Looking at it just a slightly different way, let's say I'm dealing with a 60-degree angle. Well, the 60-degree angle, so Katoa, so uh, Toa, the 60-degree angle, the side opposite is radical 3 over 2. The hypotenuse is still 1, so the sine of a 60 degree angle is radical 3 over 2. The cosine of a 60 degree angle, well that would be the side adjacent over the hypotenuse, is still 1 half. Let's say I took my triangle and I made it bigger. I hope I don't mess this up. I'm making my triangle bigger. And now, instead of having 1, 1 half, and radical 3 over 2, I've made my hypotenuse 2. This I'm saying is still a 30 degree angle. I know it doesn't look like a 30 degree angle, but you'll have to pretend. This is still a 60 degree angle. This is still my right angle. Well, I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to double this triangle down here. This now becomes a 60 degree angle. The angle at the top remains 60 degrees. This angle right here is now 60 degrees. This hypotenuse was 2. That means this side is 2 and this side is 2. 
That means this whole big thing right here is the two. That means that this side right here, the side opposite my 30 degree angle, is now one. Well, Sokatoa, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -H -H Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is now one. Hypotenuse is now 2, and what do you know? The sine of a 30 degree angle is still 1 half. It doesn't really matter the size of the triangle. The reason we did it with a hypotenuse of 1 is because that's what we're going to be using in what we call our unit circle, and it makes our calculations just quite a bit easier. But the sine and cosine, all the trigonometric functions, they are functions of the angle. They don't really have anything to do with the, with the sides other than that they are the ratio of the different sides of a triangle. Specifically, a right triangle. So we were able to calculate the sides of a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. There's another special triangle we need to deal with, and that's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Well, again, I'm going to use a hypotenuse of 1 to make my calculations easy. We'll call this side A, and we'll call this side B, and we'll call this side C. So we still go back to our Pythagorean theorem of A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And, and since C squared, C is 1, I know that 1 squared is equal to 1. But again, I have the same problem. I have an A squared and a B squared, and all I have is one other side. So the way we solve this algebraically is we have to recognize that I now have an isosceles triangle. This side and that side are equal. They're both 45 degrees at the angles, and so that makes the sides opposite equal sides. So that means that A is equal to B. So I can come back now and change my um, Pythagorean theorem, and I could say, well, if A is equal to B, I could do A squared plus A squared is equal to 1. Well, that means that 2A squared is equal to 1. So A squared is equal to 1 half, dividing by 2 on both sides right here. So I take the square root of both sides, and I get A is equal to the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 2, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. And again, I'm going to rationalize this just so that you'll see how it looks, and that is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. And again, I rationalize it because you're going to see this value a lot more than you're going to see that value, but both of them are fine, both of them are they're equally correct. So I know that side A is the square root of 2 over 2, and since A is equal to B, I know side B is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. And I know this is true no matter how I turn this triangle, no matter whether it's upside down or sideways, any way this triangle goes, those sides are going to be the same ratios. So the sine of a 45 degree angle, well, so katoa, so katoa is the side opposite over the hypotenuse. So radical 2 over 2. Divided by 1, I don't need to put that. The cosine, interestingly enough, of a 45 degree angle is the same because it was an isosceles triangle. This side is radical 2 over 2. That's the side adjacent. The side opposite is radical 2 over 2. They're the same. And the tangent of a 45 degree angle, well, that's equal to radical 2 over 2 divided by radical 2 over 2. 
Anything divided by itself is equal to 1. And so those are the, the main three components of my six path of a 45 degree angle. And you now know how to calculate it algebraically. 